Most of you probably know the pions or the kaons, but what about the A1 or the rho, the omega? Nowadays there are many different mesons appearing in experiments. Depending on their properties, they are assigned a certain name. Let's find out how this works. First, let's talk about some preliminaries. Mesons consist of a quark and an antiquark, each having a spin one half. These two quark spins couple to either spin one or spin zero. The meson's total angular momentum j can take on values between the absolute value of L minus s and L plus s, where L is the angular momentum between the two quarks. Quarks have so-called flavor quantum numbers. The up and down quarks have positive and negative isospin, and the heavier quarks have quantum numbers corresponding to their name. We follow the convention that the sign of the quantum numbers correspond to the sign of their electric charge. For the antiquarks, all signs change. In the following, we will divide the mesons in two groups, those that do not have heavy quantum numbers assigned to them, and those who do. The first thing to investigate is a meson's behavior on the parity and charge conjugation transformations. The eigenvalue on the p and c can be plus or minus 1, so we just write the sign to denote this. There are four possibilities, plus plus, plus minus, minus plus, and minus minus. P and C eigenvalues are related to spin and angular momentum. For mesons, these relations look like this. This enables us to find allowed values for the total angular momentum of mesons. If we assume the plus plus case, then L has to be an odd number in order for P to be plus 1. And if L is odd, S must be equal to 1 in order to have C equal to plus 1. So the allowed values for the total angular momentum are 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Similar calculations lead to the allowed values for the other PC combinations. Next, we'll consider quark structure. The U and D quarks form a triplet, like this. The fourth possible combination can mix with a SS bar structure, and the other combinations are too heavy to mix with the lighter ones. For the PC structures we identified earlier, we assign the following names. Now the name of a meson tells us about the quark structure and its PC eigenvalues. In order to also denote the total angular momentum, we write this as an index to the name, except for a 0 minus plus and a 1 minus minus structure. Now let's talk about mesons with heavy quantum numbers. For these mesons, one quark is always heavier than the other. For example, a charm quark cannot be paired with an anti-charm because their charm quantum number would cancel and it would belong to the previous class of mesons. We now assign a name corresponding to the heavier quark in the meson. If the lighter quark is not a U or D quark, we denote it with an index. And since we chose the convention that the sign of the flavor quantum number is the same as the sign of the electric charge, we can immediately deduce the quark structure. For instance, the D plus contains a charm as the heavier quark. Since there is no index, the lighter quark must be up or down. The plus tells us that the electric charge is positive, which means that all flavor quantum numbers must also be positive. This means we must pair a charm quark with either an up quark or an anti-down quark. But since mesons are built up by one quark and one anti-quark, this can only mean charm plus anti-down. There are two more special rules. If the JP structure is contained in this list here, then we add a star to the meson. And again, for the total angular momentum, we add an index, except for 0 minus and 1 minus states. Finally, we write the mass of the meson in MeV in brackets after the meson's name. This now completely determines the properties of the meson. That's pretty much it for this time. Thanks for watching and see you next time.